just like to start by saying I've never had a lot of confidence in myself and um, almost said I could do this, but I'm, as Adam always used to say to me, what's the worst thing that can happen? You mess it up, start again. So, here I go. Um, this is a, a poem that I wrote in February 1987 to Adam. We first met just five years ago, one hot February day. I'd got my quarter pound keyboard, now I wanted to learn to play. I went to the hall where the lessons were held and I found myself a place. I looked for the teacher and found this young man, tall and thin with a friendly face. He stood up then in front of the class and said we would start to play. His first profound instruction came, put your pointer finger on Ray. I thought, what am I doing here? Does he think I'm a fool? I know this is a beginner's class, but I learnt more than this in school. I almost didn't go back again, didn't think this was for me. But then I decided I may as well, for the first five lessons were free. <laughs> well, the next few sessions were better. We soon found our left hand too. We learned chords and then we got rhythm. Now this was something new. The five weeks passed and I stayed on. My passion was growing strong. He said I showed some promise. I'd want pedals before too long. The porter sound was traded in on an organ with pedals and all. I didn't know what had hit me, trying to walk before I could crawl. But through it all he encouraged me, always knowing the right things to say. Then came the Electone Festival. He sent me on stage to play. I didn't think I'd get, my, get through my piece, The Beatles' Norwegian Wood. But one glance at his optimistic face and something told me I could. The years have flown and I've learned a lot, sat exams and somehow got through. There's a special friend who I thank for all this, and that someone, Adam, is you. Our friendship grew to encompass my whole extended family, every one of whom Adam looked upon, treated as if they were his own family. He was in his element at our parties, where he would enjoy sharing the latest goss with Auntie Headcase, Auntie Hairdo, Auntie Sex Mad, and maybe I won't mention his nickname for me. <laughs> Dearest Ads Babe, in the words of a well-known song, you're the best friend that I've ever had, and you always will be. Thank you. That was beautiful, Tina. Thank you. And Danae, I'd now like to invite you to come forward. Danae is a friend of Adam's from Joy 94.9. I'll, I'll be brief, but I met Adam in 2007 at a, a broadcasting conference, and I was living in Perth, and I didn't realise what a fortunate opportunity I had to be accidentally sitting at his table at the conference dinner. And I heard him accept an award, and I'll always remember he said that it was, uh, he was grateful to receive the award and he was very proud of Joy, and that it was in fact about the message and not the messenger. Well, he was a pretty flash messenger, and I always enjoyed his company. We became colleagues and he, uh, he is the epitome of uh, it's about quality, not quantity. I didn't get to know him for long, but I still feel the resonance of the friendship. And uh, I'm, I feel like I'm here to represent the people that can't be here, who are so very proud of him. Thank you, Danae. And Francine, I'm sure you've got a story to share with us. <laughs> Uh, Jenny asked me to say a few words this morning, so I've jotted down a few notes on a napkin from the cafe. I was a, a coffee, and um, you'll notice at the bottom there's quite a few things I've crossed out because my children deemed it inappropriate <laughs> to mention here today. So if the kids have said it was inappropriate, I've listened to their advice, so thanks, guys. Um, look, I knew Adam for a long, long time, as well as Tina, through through music and, and the good old electronic organ, which um, Adam taught us which we um, became quite proficient at, I should say, and, and enjoyed rather much. Um, the only thing I can sort of think of is that my, Adam made me laugh all the time. He was always pushing the, the boundaries, the political boundaries, the ethical boundaries, the moral boundaries, every boundary that could possibly be pushed and get a laugh out of, Adam certainly did, but it was always done um, with dignity and taste, and he, he certainly had um, a lot of, of good advice and morals for, our, for the young people which he, he taught in music. Um, he always told me that my children would ruin my musical career and he actually offered to get rid of them several times. 
Um, I won't mention the ways that he mentioned, but um, he was certainly glad that they're here and he loved every single one of them, taught me music, taught my children music and became an integral part of our, our daily lives and we do miss him every day, um, but he's certainly, I've never experienced um, life after death or any symbols of people being there, but I think he's tried to let me know a few times that he's around the traps and not um, not ready to let go just yet. So yeah, and then one other thing that just came to mind and that I'm very proud that my husband could make Adam's and Yoda's commitment rings for their commitment ceremony and they were the same size. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same finger size, we've never had it before <laughs> in, um, in all the wedding bands and rings and commitment rings that we've done and I'm sure that we may never have it again. So that's something very unique to Yoda and Adam and um, he was, my husband was very proud to make them. Thanks, Jenny. Lovely. At this time, the microphone is yours. If you have a story to tell, a memory to share, the time is now. If you have something to say but you're feeling shy, imagine Adam standing over you, shaking his finger and demanding <laughs> that you will be brilliant. Who would like to speak first? Everyone's silent. I think we could all have a chat afterwards at the cafe while we're 